Hello and welcome to the first in a series of Ask the Expert podcasts brought to you by Agile Solutions. My name is Andrew Tong, I'm a consultant here at Agile and I'll be acting as the host today. Our topic for this session is migration from Power Center to Informatica Cloud Services, or IICS for short. Joining me today are two of our consultants um, and Informatica experts. First, we have Jason Bullen, an expert in Power Center. Hi, so I'll just give a quick intro. So my name is uh, Jason Bullen. I'm a principal consultant with Agile Solutions. I've been working with the Informatica products for about 12 years or so now. Initially starting off at Power Center, but over the years, um, I've helped clients with data quality, metadata management, master data management, and even more recently, the, the data governance stack that's becoming ever more popular. Um, my main focus for the last few years in particular has been around architecting solutions from infrastructure and, and an implementation perspective for new and existing customers. Cheers for that, Jason. So um, to partner, Jason, we also have Scott Forrest, an expert in Informatica Cloud. Uh, thanks, Andrew, um, and hello all. Um, my name is Scott Forrest, and I am a senior consultant here at Agile. Um, I have been working with Informatica products, predominantly Informatica Cloud or ICS, uh, for around five years now. Um, and in that time, I've helped dozens of our clients on board and migrate to Informatica out, um, all the way from, from your smallest charitable organization to, to large multinational corporations. So that's me. Thanks, Scott. So now the introductions are out of the way, let's get stuck into the issue at hand. We're here to talk about Power Center to IICS migration. So let's start with the obvious question. Why should a Power Center customer be interested in migrating? Why is it important to them? Yes, I can jump in here. So I'm sure most existing customers will be aware by now, but Power Center is essentially reaching end of life. So Informatic have already announced that the latest version, which is currently 10.5, will be the final release of Power Center, um, and they'll be no longer selling it to new customers. All new customers will go down the IICS route for integration or quality solutions now. Um, it's worth noting though that existing customers can still upgrade from older versions to 10.5, until it's officially end of life. Um, but from now on, Power Center will only receive critical bug fixes um, and there'll be nothing in the way of enhancements or, or new features now. So this is quite an important topic that we're addressing today as Power Center will be going out for support in the coming years. And it's a prime opportunity really for customers to move to IICS, especially if they're on an older version and we're already considering an upgrade to 10.5. Excellent. So it's crucial that Power Center customers move away from Power Center because it's coming out of support. So as we all know, Power Center has been a leading integration tool on the market for a long time now. It's deeply embedded into thousands of organizations around the world. Scott, for those customers, can you give me a brief introduction to Informatica Cloud? Sure. Uh, so Informatica Cloud, ICS. As the name suggests, it is Informatica's cloud native offering. Um, they've designed it from the ground up to be a, a modern and unified replacement for their quite broad on-premise stack. Um, so you, it, bringing together disparate products like Power Center, like Informatica data quality, like uh, data engineering, um, and bits and pieces of enterprise data catalog as well, all into one product offering native to the cloud rather than all these separate products that were traditionally on-premise um, on premise offerings. So it is their flagship product in the cloud world and it is it's essentially where they're going, it's what their key, key development item is and what they're, what they're really going to be pushing over the next few years. So I guess from that then, the key question is, is Informatica Cloud ready to take over from Power Center? Uh, short answer, yep, yes it is. Um, Informatica themselves are the, one who are the ones who are encouraging this changeover. Um, and a lot of that has to do with how the maturity of the IICS platform. 
So it's been around and it's been developed for, for over 15 years now. It's gone through its early cycle. It's gone through the early days of pain that these kind of platforms go through. And the range of features that are embedded into the, the ISS platform has expanded greatly. Uh, it, it really is now a mature product. Um, in, ter in terms of its competitors, I mean, ISS has topped the Gartner charts in, in that category for seven years in a row now. Um, so, so the power center customers out there who are considering uh, migrating to ICS will find all the functionality that they need is, is there in order to make the switch. And also there's quite a lot more um, added in as well that they can take advantage of. Excellent. So it sounds like IICS is not just ready to take over from power center, but there's also a lot of new features in IICS that power center customers will actually benefit from. Yeah, exactly. Um, so not only does it have features like cloud data quality and data profiling, they're similar to what you would find on the on-premise data quality tool. There's also mass ingestion, streaming of data, which are more like the big data management or the data engineering tool. Um, there's API creation and management, serverless processing, elastic auto scaling, and, and all these 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 new cutting edge features that come with the cloud. Um, it really is quite a long list of features uh, that IICS has, has got over, over what power center customers will be used to and that you know power center customers making the switch you can just get adva take advantage of those uh, straight out of the box. Excellent. So okay we've got a handle on why migrating from power center to IICS is important, what IICS is and what the improvements that it brings to customers. So let's tell me more about the migration process. What does that look like? Yep, I can help with that. So a typical migration is broken down into three phases. So we have the, the preparation phase, the migration phase, and then finally the deployment phase. So if we go a bit more detail, the preparation phase focuses on standing up and configuring the new target IICS environment, assuming you don't already have one. Um, we also plan the migration itself and we'll define a prioritized list of power center folders. The idea being that we target the most important folders first and work our way down to the least important ones. Um, and then if we move on to the migration phase, so this involves assessing the power center logic in the prioritized list. We then migrate that power center logic and then we'll unit test it for validation and for completeness. Um, there's an element of automation and manual conversion in this phase, which we'll talk more about in a bit. And then the final phase is the deployment phase, and it's aimed at basically re-engineering the supporting components of your existing power center integration. So this is things like scripts and parameter files, um, and then we'll also be implementing the required scheduling and orchestration before pushing the migrated components into production. Um, and all of these phases can be done iteratively, um, focusing on the most important integrations, but also still keeping your existing power center environment up and running in parallel. Excellent. So from that though, customers have complex ecosystems around power center integrations. They've spent many years developing integrations that they don't want to lose and have to start from scratch. Yeah, so that's where the migration factory comes in. So the migration factory is essentially an Informatica offered managed service, which aims to automate the conversion of power center mappings and workflows to the IICS equivalents. Now, obviously, we won't be able to migrate everything. There's always going to be an element of manual conversion, which is typically identified during the preparation phase that we just spoke about. Um, but it does, however, have quite a high conversion success rate. Um, the migration factory itself won't actually perform any of the manual conversions. But this is where your chosen integration partner, such as ourselves at Agile, um, would come in to support as part of the overall migration process. Excellent. So the migration factory massively simplifies going from Power Center to IICS. It's allowing customers to retain their existing integration work. How else will customers going through a migration limit their risk? Yep, I'll jump in on this. Um... Typical migrations happen in stages. Um, 
it's not going to be a case of power centre disappears and ISS takes its place all, all in quick succession. We go through the process um, of the migration factory, as Jason's just described. And while we're going through all that process, um, power center is kept up and running. It's doing the day job, as it were. Once your integrations have been set up on IICS, they've been through a migration factory, they've you know, had the little bits of manual tweaking that they require, they've been tested, they've been approved, we begin a gradual switch over. So we'll gradually switch off the power center integrations and switch on the ISCS ones. The whole point being that from a back end, from from the front end, sorry, so the customer experience is just a, a smooth transition between the tools. Okay, but on the face of it, it sounds like that might be quite costly. The customers goes from paying for one integration platform to having two in place at exactly the same time. On the face of it, yes, but however, that that's not the case um, here. ICS is charged differently to other Informatica tools. It brings with it you know, a new pricing model where you pay by usage, um, which is fairly standard on cloud platforms. So customers will pay for a certain amount of what they call IPUs, Informatica processing units, um, which are a measure of data throughput. And it acts similar, as I say, to other um, cloud providers where it acts like reserved capacity. So the customer uh, going through this process would pay for a small number of ICUs, start small, inexpensive, and then as they gradually switch over, as we've discussed, they will scale up their number of IPUs as they scale down their power center. So actually the costs balance themselves out. Brilliant. So thanks both. I feel like we've given listeners a good overview of the topic the reasons and benefits for migrating from power center to IICS. So let's start turning our attention to some customer submitted questions. So first up, a question from the development perspective. What does IICS look like from a developer perspective? Well, I suppose we can first take a look at how development currently works in power center. So it's made up of a handful of tools, each with their own purpose. So there's a separate tool for mapping development, there's one for workflow development, one for monitoring the actual execution of workflows, and even a tool for managing your repository metadata and performing environment code promotions. And um, it's probably worth pointing out that a lot of these tools are, are fit client tools, which a developer must have installed on their machine or laptop. And this has historically caused some issues, especially with customers who tend to lock down machines and you know they don't allow users to install software without going through some lengthy approval process. So this has meant that the tools weren't easily accessible um, and in some cases would have to be installed in a Citrix farm or you know just made available to users on a remote virtual machine. And this just adds a layer of inconvenience to the, the overall development lifecycle. Um, and as with most things these days, a lot of this is moving to the browser. So do you want to jump in and tell us a bit about how this works in the IICS world? Yep, sure. Um, so the first key difference is all those tools are gone, thankfully. Um, there, there's absolutely no need for, for any of them in IICS. Um, there is one development tool, um, and it is hosted by Informatica themselves. So all that's a massive um, simplification of your development environment. Developers will access the tool through a web UI, um, and that single UI experience gives them access to the whole suite of IICS applications. So your, you know, your data quality, your API creation and management, your uh, batch ETL and data integration tools. Um, the tool itself has been designed to be very low code, um, so most of the development will be done in a drag and drop palette style scenario. Um, so that can be done by a user with, with relatively little coding ex expertise as well. Um, for example, like if a developer needs a specific type of data transformation, they simply go to the menu on the left, drag it onto the main canvas in the center of the UI and place it where it needs to go. Um, it's a much, much friendlier user experience uh, and you know, having experienced both, I can tell you, I would not go back. 
um, from IFCS. You mentioned there, Scott, that the developer tool is hosted in Informatica. Um, that links us really, really nicely onto the next customer question, actually. Where does my data live in Informatica Cloud? Yep, so that, that's, that's a, a very good one. It's an important one as well um, for, for uh, customers to wrap their heads around. Um, so because Informatica hosts the development environment, sometimes that can be quite a, quite a difficult one for customers to get their head around. That development environment only requires metadata. Um, so metadata about your source systems, your target systems, you know, field names, tables, and the sizes of fields, etc., are sent on to Informatica, just the metadata, um, so that the developers can use that web UI to create your, your integrations. Um, in terms of in terms of the key, the key security questions, credentials and data itself are all kept behind the customer's uh, firewalls in their ecosystem and don't have to go anywhere else um, for Informatica Cloud. That's really good to hear. So how then does IICS process that data? So it, IICS is based around the concept of secure agents. Um, these are small but powerful processing engines which are responsible for retrieving data from sources, transforming it and sending it on to targets. Um, these little secure agents can be installed wherever a customer wants them um, and the customer can have as many as they, as they want, as many as they need. Um, they can be hosted on on-premise servers, they can be on cloud-hosted machines on AWS, Azure, GCP, you name it. Um, the customer can even request that Informatica host one for them as well, although you know, most customers don't do that because um, they want to keep the secure agents within their own, their own ecosystems. Um, the installs can be, can be mix and match as much as needed as well, so you can have some on-premise, some on Azure, some on AWS. It's completely open and flexible to having a multi-cloud multi ecosystem and also on-premise systems as well. Um, and, and typically what a customer would do is they'd group together their secure agents for load balancing and for failover. Um, there's also the ability to have auto-scaling of secure agents and secure agent clusters. So if you've got variable data loads, you can have your secure agent set up in a, in a serverless way so that when a big data load comes in, IICS will analyze it and say, there's a billion records here. We're going to need this amount of processing power, which is this amount of secure agents. And it will automatically spin up a secure agent cluster for you, process the data, and then spin it all back down, which means, you know, the secure agents and the ecosystems they live in are only spun up for the shortest amount of time that they are needed, which ultimately saves customers money. Thanks, Scott. So our next question is on sustainability and resilience. One of our customers asked, my power center platform has been running for many years. It has been stable. We have reliable recovery should we encounter any issues. How stable is IICS and how will we be able to ensure recovery in a DR scenario? Yep, so I can jump in here just with a quick look at a current setup for a typical power center deployment. So power center is traditionally an on-premise deployment, as we all know, um, and therefore requires the provisioning of one or more machines to run the services, depending on your, your failover requirements. So the typical DR scenario, this would involve having a, a passive node available in your DR site, ready for failover, should that situation ever actually arise, um, or even within a site, if we're not just considering site-to-site -site failover, you know, if we're considering inter-site failover. Um, but there's a few other key factors as well when, when we're looking at Power Center, such as you know, the failover or replication of the underlying metadata repositories, um, and obviously the associated backups and restoration paths to meet your target RTO and RPO. So that's your recovery time objective, you know, the expected time to restore a functional service for end users or for developers, um, and your recovery point objective, which is just essentially defines the acceptable amount of data loss 
um, IICS being a cloud offering is a bit of a change to the current process. Do you want to give us the highlights of how this would work post-migration? Yep. Uh, so, so again, um, let's look at the two kind of components of IICS. Firstly, you've got the, the web hosted development environment. Um, that's Informatica. They took full ownership in that regard uh, in terms of uh, automatic failover of the metadata repositories. So nothing for the customer to worry about there. And they do have several nines um, percentage uptime uh, as well for that environment. Um, for secure agents, a customer would typically, as I said before, group them together and have a minimum of two in a group so that if one of the secure agents goes down, the other one is still there to service and process the customer data. Um, the only thing a customer will really want to take backups of in a DR, for a DR scenario are logs and any files local to the secure agent. So if you've got the secure agent uh, on, a, on an AWS machine, for example, there, there are some local logs for that secure agent. Um, typically, though, what you would do is you'd make sure those logs and local files were on a shared drive, um, such as EFS on AWS, so that in the case of a, a secure agent and its machine going down, um, another one would be spun up, it would be connected to the same file share, and it would be able to, to get back on the road again and get it get working again for the customer. Um, so, so in terms of in terms of comparison with Power Center, again, it's it's quite a quite a large simplification in the cloud world. Thanks both. So, conscious of time here, let's look at the final customer question. My organisation just has just gone through the process of upgrading to Power Center 10.5. It was an involved process. There was downtime for users, lots of hands-on work for the people doing the upgrade. How are equivalent upgrades delivered in IICS? Uh, yeah, I'll take this one. Um, we've experienced you know, quite, quite a few upgrades to, to Power Center and other Informatica on-premise products. And as you say, they are quite, quite involved upgrades. Um, in IICS, all that complexity is gone. Um, so the only piece of kit that you have to look after from an Informatica perspective is the secure agent, as we've been talking about. And that secure agent itself is self-updating. So the same connectivity, which allows the transfer of metadata to the Informatica servers for the development UI, allows it to retrieve updates from Informatica as well. And a customer can schedule when these happen. So automatic updates take place during a time of, of minimal usage, um, and they typically only take a few minutes to apply. Um, another advantage of these is they're deployed in a rolling manner. So if you've got your secure agents um, for your IICS organization, the update will be applied one at a time. And if, for example, secure agent number four has an issue, the upgrade automatically gets rolled back four, three, two, one, so that you're straight back to your pre-upgrade state and everything goes back to working fully as expected. So yeah, again, I'll say, I'll say it for, for a third or fourth time, complexity completely gone with IIS, yes. Perfect. Thank you very much to Scott and Jason. That brings us to an end of the Ask the Expert session. However, if listeners do have any further questions that they'd like to ask the team, we encourage them to contact us via our website, agilesolutions.co.uk.